What's up, folks? David here, Texas Horns football, recapping Texas 27, uh, Kansas State 24. Um, another walk-off game-winning field goal from, from Dicker the Kicker, um, two and three weeks, actually. So, a uh, close win, but definitely leave your comments below. Let me know what you thought about the game, where do things go from here. Uh, definitely give the video a like, thumbs up. Uh, share the video out and invite some more people on here. Also, don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Texas Horns Football. We have about 55,000 Longhorns fans uh, on that page, so definitely come over there, join us, and join the conversation in the, in the community over there. So, close win in Austin. Kansas State just always seems to be um, a really close game. I believe this was the first... Um, uh, first three straight wins against Kansas State, which is which is pretty cool. So obviously Kansas State comes in well coached team, always that team that's like fundamentally sound and just good enough to really beat um, elite teams on on any given Saturday, which we saw last week against Oklahoma. Okay, Kansas State did beat Oklahoma. Texas holds Kansas State to half of the points that they scored against Oklahoma. So I think the big story of this game was the defense, uh, defensive adjustments and getting some key players back on defense um, with an extra week of rest in the bye week. The game started out not looking like that at all and just incredibly frustrating in the first quarter, especially given the fact that Texas had the extra bye week to prepare for Kansas State. And then Kansas State, yes, coming off of a huge win over Oklahoma, but, you know, <clears throat> it's hard for those type of teams to get up for those big, uh, big games against... Um, you know, just against better, more talented teams back-to-back. -back. But Kansas State comes out there and scores two touchdowns really right off the bat in the first quarter. Um, that first touchdown came on the third, I think it was like third and five. Texas, of course, brings the blitz, uh, brings the pressure kind of right in the middle, and Skylar Thompson just dumps it to the running back coming out there, kind of flaring out to the left, essentially wide open, has basically one defender to, to beat and takes it to the end zone. So, you know, that was incredibly frustrating to see just the way that that turned out um, that first qu first quarter. But after going down 14 to nothing, Texas reels, uh, reels off 24 points uh, the rest of the game and the defense absolutely steps up. The Texas defense, the 2019 Texas Longhorns defense, allows three points uh, for the for the you know second through fourth quarter, and then obviously Kansas State getting a touchdown off of the kick return. So really impressive adjustment by the Texas defense, allowing only three points uh, in the final three quarters. So great to get Caden Stearns back. B.J. Foster looked healthy again. Um, still missing Jeffrey McCulloch. Um, I thought the play from from the three down linemen uh, was, was there, was a lot better. I think the big stat of the game was allowing only 51 yards rushing from Kansas State, which that, that's their go-to, right? That, that's their, that's their go-to offense is their rushing offense, especially with the quarterback. And, and Texas was really able to shut that down. And I believe... Um, for the second half, Texas only allowed like 70-something yards uh, of offense from Kansas State, which was really cool to see, which we've kind of seen the opposite of that f from this defense. Um, even going going back to the Oklahoma game and the TCU game, where early on they're holding the teams, and then they kind of crumble toward the end not being helped a lot by the Texas offense in certain situations in those games. But in this game against Kansas State, the Texas defense really stepped up, really got stingy, and, and made great adjustments. So that was really cool to see. 
On the offensive side of the ball, obviously a huge game from Keontae Ingram. He looked amazing, but also much better run blocking from the O-line. Um, Ingram really was allowed to do what he does best in open space. Had two second-half touchdowns. Looked great on, on, on both of those touchdowns. The first one where he kind of took it to the sideline and dove for the pylon. Uh, he got two really good blocks from Malcolm Epps and uh, and then from Brennan Eagles a little bit f- further downfield. Eagles kind of came off his block maybe a little bit early, but but still great job by both of those guys, um, bigger receivers, uh, wall- walling it off for for Ingram who kind of took it took it to the left side. And then that second touchdown where he kind of looked like he was stopped at the line of scrimmage, but. Um, broke outside and then cut back inside, making that making that one defender miss, which was which was really cool. So he had like 139 yards in in the two touchdowns, and I just really think that when when we're able to see a fully healthy, strong Keontae Ingram, he just looks looks so great, especially when he's able to get past that you know, just first three yards and just get into some open space. He really does some special things. He he runs a lot stronger this year, and I think that that overall balance that is really there that, that we saw last year, um, he seems to be getting a little bit lower at the point of contact and, and, and runs really strong. And then uh, Rashawn Johnson still made an impact. He had that really awesome uh, hurdle play where he, where he jumped over the defender, uh, just didn't get a lot of a lot of touches, but Ingram Ingram was was the hot hand. It was also cool to see the offense not abandon the run in a close game, uh, even even being down fourteen to nothing. Um, it was still cool to see the the running game present for the entire game and, and not giving up on it, uh, which I also think that that shows trust in the defense that that the defense was making their adjustments the offense didn't panic but you know still a close game texas had to come from behind and and it was tied up 24 to 24 and you know the offense was was asked to you know kind of like they did in in the kansas game uh put together a drive get down there uh at least get in get in the red zone uh to set it up for for Cameron Dicker, and you know the offense took the ball, ate more than six minutes off the clock, went like 65 yards I think it was, and uh, and got down uh, really close to the goal line. And I, I I saw a lot of posts on on Facebook and a couple of other YouTube videos about that they they wanted you know Texas to to go for the score there, go for the touchdown, but. You know, with with given the situation of the game, I think that eating clock was was crucial, and basically, basically, once Texas got down there so close, and the game got under, you know, close to under two minutes, a minute to go, Texas was in complete control at, at that point, and that's what you want. You want to just be able to be in complete control of the clock. Obviously, Texas has a ton of confidence in Cameron Dicker and and basically would be able to kind of do whatever is 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 open at that point. So they opted to run a few more plays, run out the clock. Obviously, I think if a touchdown would have just opened up, you know, would have been wide open there, they would have taken it. Sam probably would have just ran it in untouched, but it wasn't. So they opted to just kind of run some clock out, get a little bit closer, position it for Cameron Dicker, who who kicked uh, just just a pretty chip shot, uh, easy, perfect field goal uh, to win the game with another walk off field goal, just like they did against Kansas, back to back Kansas teams. So that was that was cool to see. Um, coming up next week in Ames, Iowa. Against Iowa State, just a uh, another place that Texas has had a rough time against going back several years. Just a tough place to win. It's supposed to be cold. Kickoff is at 2.30. This is an Iowa State team that probably should have beaten Oklahoma. 
They got down early, but really closed the gap in the fourth quarter. Um, it was 42 to 41, and they opted for a for a two point conversion to try to win the game, where Oklahoma should have been called for pass interference um, and should have given Iowa State another another shot at it. But Iowa State, tough team, tough to beat. You know, Brock Purdy's a a, a really good, tough quarterback. So, you know, I I think we shouldn't expect anything other than another close game. You know, um, definitely more confidence, though, given the way the defense was able to really shut down Kansas State. Um, And I think that just like against, just like how Kansas State had to really get up against Oklahoma and Texas in back-to-back weeks, Iowa State's going to have to do the same thing. You know, and that's not easy emotionally to, to really get up against, uh, you know, two two teams like Oklahoma and Texas in back-to-back weeks. And considering kind of a demoralizing loss where Iowa State really rallied at the end and and really came just that close to, to beating Oklahoma. So I think that's probably going to be tough to, to sort of get up for that in, in back-to-back weeks and kind of have that emotional level. But Iowa State, obviously a well-coached team too. Um, that that's, that's A lot of that is, is just on the coaches and the upperclassmen leadership. So Texas goes in the next two weeks, Iowa State and Baylor. Two absolutely crucial games. Texas is absolutely still in the hunt for uh for a trip to back to the Big 12 championship game but they're going to have to win out. You know, Oklahoma has one loss against Kansas State. Baylor is still the outright leader in the conference. Um narrowly beating uh, t- uh TCU uh, in overtime. Multiple overtimes. But if the the big matchup obviously this Saturday is Oklahoma and Baylor Texas is going to need Baylor to lose once, and then obviously Texas is going to have to beat Baylor in Waco. So two road games coming up for for Texas. Obviously Waco though is just is just up the street, but Iowa State's going to be a tough a, a tough game. And but if Texas beats Iowa State, beats Baylor, and then finishes with a win against against Texas Tech, and then gets a little bit of help from Oklahoma. Um, against Baylor because Baylor's already beaten uh, Iowa State barely. Um, Texas is in. Texas will hold the tiebreaker over Baylor, and um, Oklahoma will go in kind of as the you know number one, and Texas will go back in as the number two. If not, then it's going to be Baylor Oklahoma. So that's kind of that's kind of where things stand right now. So it's you know it, it's going to be week to week. Uh, obviously, it's going to be a tight race. Um, but, you know, Texas losing to TCU just kind of put themselves in that spot. But even if Texas had beaten TCU, but then lost to Baylor, Baylor would hold the tiebreaker. Okay, so it it, re- it comes down to not really mattering. Texas is still going to have to win. Texas is still going to have to win out. So that's, that's um, how things are playing out. Um, Kind of sad that there's only three games left, but um, let me know your comments below about the Kansas State win. Who else stood out to you? What were your thoughts on on the defense um, and the defensive adjustments um, after after going down 14 to nothing? But um, and just let me know what what your thoughts were um, on that, and, and we'll see who we get back. Um, uh, Jordan Whittington obviously was suited up and could have played. Um, if if there was an emergency, if if Ingram or Rashawn Johnson went down with with an injury, um, I, I think was the only scenario that he would have played. But I, we do expect to see him play um, against Iowa State. Um, another thing that stood out to me that I forgot to mention: no catches by Jake Smith, um, which was which was kind of weird. We we haven't seen Jake Smith uh, really at all in the past two weeks, which is kind of interesting. Um, and then. Um, Another thing that stood out, uh, we actually got a punt return. Finally, finally this season we got a punt return from Brandon Jones. 
uh, that actually set up a, a, a touchdown, I believe, two plays later. So that, that ended up being being effective, so we need more of that. Uh, we need more of that from, from our punt return guys. But anyway, those are my thoughts, guys. Uh, always appreciate uh, you uh, you subscribing, commenting, share the video out. And again, check us out on Facebook, Texas Horns Football. Join the community on there. Uh, so we'll uh, we'll talk about it there too. So always appreciate you guys.